It may harm your defense if you do not mention when questioned something that you later rely on in court, and anything you do say may be given in evidence. These words you will recognize from the police caution. The reason the police give this by way of a caution is to remove any excuse that someone being questioned was not aware of the risks that failure to mention something when questioned would have an adverse inference against them if they then mention something in court. This is essentially a principle of fairness to make a suspect aware that when being questioned, anything that would be reasonable to mention at that stage ought to be mentioned or explained at that stage to avoid this adverse inference later. Section 34 of the Criminal Justice and Public Order Act of 1994 sets out the effect of a defendant's failure to mention facts when being questioned or charged. Section 35 sets out the effect of a defendant's silence at trial. Section 36 sets out the effect of the defendant's refusal or failure to account for objects, substances or marks that have been found. Section 37 sets out the effect of a defendant's refusal or failure to account for his or her presence at a particular place. For example, why were you there? And finally, section 38 sets out the interpretation of the provisions set out herein. So first of all, what do we mean by an adverse inference? Well, simply put, if a defendant fails to answer questions and fails to account for certain facts and events at the time he is interviewed, but then puts forward an argument in court as to his defence, which was not mentioned or is inconsistent with what was mentioned previously, the jury may be invited to conclude that this has been fabricated, amended, or in some other way embellished to make it more compelling at trial, having had time to think about it in between. There are six necessary conditions for an adverse inference to be drawn in circumstances where there has been a failure to mention a relevant fact when being questioned. First of all, that there must be proceedings against the person for that offence. Secondly, the alleged failure to mention a fact at trial must have occurred before the defendant was charged. Thirdly, this alleged failure must have occurred during questioning under caution by a constable. This goes back to the caution I mentioned earlier and the principle of fairness. Next, the questioning must have been directed to trying to discover whether or by whom the alleged offence was committed. Also, the alleged failure of the accused must have been to mention any fact relied on in his defence in those proceedings. Again, that produces the wording for the caution. And finally, the alleged failure must have been to mention a fact which in the circumstances existing at the time, the accused could reasonably have been expected to mention when so questioned. How about the situation where your lawyer has advised you to remain silent? Of course, part of the caution is that you do not have to say anything. You are not compelled to speak. However, remaining silent on your lawyer's advice does not always mean that the jury won't or won't be invited to draw an adverse inference against you. In the 1996 case of Crown and Argent, the defendant complained that he acted on solicitor's advice not to answer questions when being interviewed by the police. The court allowed the jury to draw inferences from this failure. However, it was decided that the jury is not concerned with the correctness of the solicitor's advice but with the reasonableness of the defendant's conduct in all the circumstances, including the advice given. In other words, although the defendant was advised to remain silent, the jury could decide whether it was reasonable for the defendant to remain silent and failure to mention facts in interview when questioned. Ultimately, this was a question of fact for the jury. So how about a pre-prepared or a self-serving statement? Well, some defendants, to avoid an adverse inference, will read out or have their solicitor read out 
a pre-prepared statement and then refused to answer any further questions. And indeed, Crown against Knight in 2003 held that an adverse inference cannot be drawn against the defendant who merely refuses to answer police questions after reading out such a pre-prepared statement. However, as before, if there is an inconsistency at trial with this pre-prepared statement, there may well be an adverse inference drawn after all. So it follows that to avoid an adverse inference, the evidence given by a defendant must be completely consistent with this pre-prepared statement having not had the opportunity to fabricate or embellish or change that evidence in between. I hope this has been an interesting, if brief, overview. Please remember to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.